I'm Jacob DeZamba and I'm the president of Third Millennium Farming uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what Third Millennium Farming is. But before I do that, I'm going to explain uh, what Third Millennium Farming is responding to. Uh, basically by the year 2050, we're expecting there to be a big gap between the amount of food that we can produce and the amount of food that we're going to need to feed everybody. And that gap basically comes about because of two main reasons. The first is that there's simply going to be more people. Right now we have a little bit over 6 billion people on Earth, and by the year 2050 we're going to have closer to 10 billion people. Uh, the other reason is people are going to be eating a lot more meat. And uh, it turns out that meat is the most land and resource intensive type of food that we produce. Uh, the way you can measure uh, this is through, through a thing known as a food print. Basically a food print measures all of the land that you need to farm all of the food required to feed one person for one year. And it turns out that people's food print in North America and Europe is a lot bigger than people in poor regions of the world like Africa and Southeast Asia. And the main reason for that is because we eat more meat. Uh, and as we get closer to the year 2050, it's expected that the poorest regions of the world will gain in affluence. And as these regions do that, they inevitably start to consume more meat, which leads to uh, an increase in meat consumption around the world and a larger demand on our ability to produce more meat and therefore more farmlands. So basically what we're looking at is about a 50% increase in population by the year 2050 and also about a 50% increase in our ability to produce meat. So what this means is the world basically has to double its food production capacity by the year 2050. Um, so how are we going to feed everyone when the time comes? The most common question of that is, can't we just simply expand our current food production system? And we can, but there's a few concerns with that. Uh, mainly, right now about 25% of the world's land area is taken up by food production activities. So simply the footprint of our food producing lands is already infringing on local wildlife and ecosystems, and it has destructive effects on those ecosystems on local and regional scales. And this cumulatively cumulatively uh, starts to hurt the world's biosphere. Uh, the second reason is that we pump a massive amount of fertilizers, pesticides into these lands and as these wash away through our rivers and into our lakes uh, they find their way back into the food chain and slowly begin to poison our ecosystems from the bottom up and there is even some evidence that that may work its way up the food chain all the way to humans and be harming us as well. Uh, and finally there's an ethical concern uh, because as we try to find ways of producing meat more efficiently and cheaper, we tend to kind of throw ethics out the window. And even though we all, or many of us, like to eat meat, few of us like to think about the ethical problems that go into raising and eventually slaughtering the animals that we eat. Now, there are other techniques that are being looked at by researchers and scientists, and these include genetically engineered crops or improved fertilization techniques in third world countries and so on. And all of these things will help us produce food in the future. But even if you ask the most optimistic scientists, they'll tell you that we're just on schedule to feed everyone as our population grows. But in a world where the climate is changing, it's bound to have disruptive effects on our ability to produce food. And no one can truly predict the full effect of climate change yet. So it seems like it would make sense to look at other techniques of producing food. Techniques that aren't as vulnerable to climate change, that are more ethical in the way they treat animals, that do not rely on heavy amounts of chemicals or fertilizers to increase their growth and most importantly techniques that use a significantly s smaller amount of land to produce the same amount of food and that's where third millennium farming comes in third millennium farming is basically about using city bio wastes such as gray water and black water to grow micro crops such as algae and grass which along with some additional types of bio waste such as compost and industrial waste will be used to feed micro livestock or insects and these micro livestock are then going to be humanely euthanized, baked, and pulverized to produce a new ingredient called protein flour. So first, why are we using insects as food? There's two main reasons for that. The first reason is that insects are cold-blooded, and as a result, they don't spend any energy heating their bodies. Uh, and this allows them to use most of the food that they eat for growing. Uh, just to give you an idea of how much more efficient they are, if you were to feed about 100 calories to a cow, it would produce about 7 to 10 calories of meat. On the contrary, if you feed about 100 calories to crickets, they'll produce about 50 calories of meat. Uh, the other main reason is that insects don't eat the same stuff we do. Uh, and this is a problem because livestock do. 
uh, they eat a significant amount of the crops that we grow for ourselves, like wheat, corn, and oats. And we feed it to livestock because it's highly nutritious and it helps them grow faster. But insects don't. They can eat things like algae, they can eat things like our yard waste, our grass clippings, our tree clippings, or our kitchen compost, or you know, dinner scraps. And this is the, exactly the kind of stuff we're working on at Third Millennium Farming. Currently we're coming out with our first technological innovation called a domestic cricket reactor. Uh, and it's basically going to be a consumer appliance that can use household bio-waste such as your yard waste or kitchen scraps to feed to crickets. Uh, and they're, it's going to produce food grade crickets at about 10 pounds every two months. And these crickets are, can then be converted to protein flour which can be used in various recipes that our chef Nathan Isberg is working on. Uh, things like breads, pasta doughs, souffles, soup and sauce bases. And uh, this unit is intended for sale also in North America and Europe, but mainly for sale in third world regions that, uh, where the culture has an affinity towards eating insects and where the region is experiencing food security issues. So it's meant for families that can use their household bioways to grow these crickets and then either sell them for income or use them to support their own families.